Hello friends, I'm Christy, this is Taylor, and this is Michaela, and today we are gonna be making some individual freezer meals. So if you've been following us for a while, you'll know that we've already done a big dinner freezer meal. It was huge, it was massive. This time we are going to be making some individual lunches because I'm a homeschool mom, my husband goes to work, and and we need lunches. It can get really expensive for him to buy lunch every day in the cafeteria at work, and it can be really frustrating for us trying to scrounge up lunch every day. These containers, I was so excited to find on Amazon. They are microwave safe and they're reusable, so they come with a little lid, and they're gonna be perfect for our little individual freezer lunches. And these are also great if you're living by yourself or if you just have a night by yourself, if your family is out gallivanting or, or everybody just needs to grab something quick, these are also really fantastic for that. So I can't wait to get started. Are y'all excited, girls? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What are you most excited about? Pizza. The pizza? That's gonna be yummy. How about you? Potatoes. The potatoes. Potatoes, oh, the mashed, there's mashed potatoes in one of them yes. right there. The potato girl. You're not excited about the chicken, you're just excited about the potatoes. I am excited about the chicken, but I'm more excited about the potatoes. And I'm excited about lunchtime being a breeze. So we've got 50 of these that we're gonna fill up this weekend, and we're gonna make 10 different recipes and do five of each, and then fill up our freezer. We're so excited for you to join us. Let's get started. So our first freezer meal is Mississippi Mud Roast. I love Mississippi Red Roast, so let's get started. So first we're gonna pour half of this beef broth in there. I'll link the, the video where we made this. I am using an Instapot for this. Okay, so now we're gonna add our chuck roast. And you wanna make sure you wash your hands good after this. Ew! So now we're gonna do some pickled peppers that we canned ourselves. I'll also put a link in the description to that. Um, you can use pepperino peppers, but I'm gonna use these. And you can just add a few, really just for flavor. I like the taste. I think that's good. So <clears throat> now we're gonna do a packet of ranch dressing mix and one packet of odd juice, odd juice gravy. We're gonna do a quarter cup of butter. That is four tablespoons. And now we're just gonna put a little salt in it. I'm using pink Himalayan salt, but you can use any kind. So we love our Instapot and we're gonna use this for our Mississippi mud roast. Usually it would take about eight to 12 hours to cook this if you weren't using an Instapot, but we can use this and it'll be falling apart within two hours. So we wanna close the lid, you just slide it on and then twist it. So we're gonna press pressure cook. It's already set on two hours, so we must have cooked a roast last time we used this. We're gonna click start and we'll just let it sit. A beep when it's done. So while we're waiting for that, we're gonna make our rice. We're using a rice cooker. You can boil it on the stove if you don't have a rice cooker, but a rice cooker makes it easy. When you buy your rice cooker, it'll probably come with this little cup. You wanna fill this up two times with rice and pour it in. And if you don't have this little cup, it's about three quarters of a cup. Okay, now we're gonna put two whole cups of water in here. I'm gonna pour that in there. And now we're gonna stick it in our pot. And I'm gonna use delay time so that it'll be finished around the time that the um, Instapot is done. So we're gonna do delay time. Now we're gonna press cook. And we're just gonna let that sit. And they'll be done soon. All right, meal number two, super duper easy. We're gonna make some easy spaghetti. So first things first, we wanna put a pot of water on to boil. And water always boils faster when you put the lid on. There's your hint for the day. 
So then we wanna brown a pound of meat. You can do ground beef. This is actually deer meat that Taylor provided for us during deer season. We are so excited and thankful to have a freezer full of meat. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of salt on it to add some flavor. And a lot of people fuss about deer meat and, and tasting gamey, but honestly, when, when you use it in things like uh, spaghetti or chili or you know tacos with, with strong seasoning, you really can't tell the difference. And um, this is just a great way to use that meat. All right, my water is boiling and I'm gonna put in some noodles. This is already half length spaghetti. How cute is that? I got it as a substitution in my Walmart order. I didn't even know there was such a thing. It's for people that are too lazy to break apart their spaghetti, but hey, <laughs> it'll work great. So we're gonna go ahead and put some of this in there. And I have found nine minutes to be the optimal spaghetti time I like. So we're gonna set a timer for nine minutes and then we can strain the spaghetti after that. Turn the heat down just a little bit. All right, and it looks like our meat is all the way browned as well over here, perfect. And because this is deer meat and it's super lean, there's not really any grease in the bottom. I could drain it. I'm not, but if you have ground beef, you probably wanna drain it because it'll get really greasy. And I'm gonna pour in the spaghetti sauce. This is spaghetti sauce that we actually made from our tomatoes in our garden this year. I will link that video down below, but any spaghetti sauce off of the store shelf will do, whatever your preference. And we just wanna stir this up and let it heat all the way through. And in fact, I'm probably just gonna let it go on medium low until the noodles are done. And then we'll pull it off. Our pasta's done, our meat sauce has simmered and cooked for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and add my noodles to my pasta mix it all in there real good and how many noodles you add the ratio that really is a hundred percent personal preference so that's super easy so for these little individual meals what i'm going to do is have some broccoli and then some of the spaghetti i'm going to go ahead and put my broccoli first And this is just regular old frozen broccoli. I wish I could say this was our broccoli we got from the garden, but unfortunately last year we didn't have a good enough broccoli harvest to be able to put a bunch away. So this is store-bought broccoli. It'll be okay. <laughs> and now we're gonna put our spaghetti in here. And I maybe have one bowl full left that we will eat, maybe dinner tonight or maybe lunch tomorrow. I have a feeling all week we're gonna be eating leftovers from this cook-a-thon. But we have a nice little lunch ready to go. Now, it's important that you let these cool down all the way before just sticking them in the deep freeze because they'll bring the temperature down in the deep freeze and they can spoil food around it. We don't want that to happen. So you wanna bring the temperature down. You just wanna leave them out until they're room temperature and it shouldn't take terribly long and then you can just stick them right into your deep freeze. Five mils done, let's go on to the next one. Now we're going to be making beef enchiladas. So the first thing we're gonna do is brown some meat and the recipe is for beef enchiladas, but again, we're using venison for this. So I'm doubling this recipe, so I believe it's gonna be three pounds of meat. All right, so now we're gonna brown it. And also, we're gonna put these in the oven, so I'm gonna preheat that to 350. And you do want to make sure that you thaw the meat all the way through because it can get really hard to brown and cut up if it's not folded through, if it's frozen a little bit. All right, so now we're going to add onion and garlic and a teaspoon of cumin. I'm 
I'll have the exact recipe in the description below. Next, we're gonna add some pinto beans and I have drained them already. Then some green chilies. Then I'm just gonna add the salt. And pepper. All right, so this mixture is all ready. So I'm going to move over there to assemble everything and I'll see you over there. All right, so now we are going to take enchilada sauce and spread half a cup of it in each. I have two nine by 13 baking dishes. All right, so now we can start assembling the enchiladas. So first, we have our two pans with enchilada sauce in them. We're gonna take a tortilla. So we're going to uh, first put some enchilada sauce, then some beef filling. And some cheese. Then we're going to roll it up and lay them seam side down in the baking dish. And now we're just gonna do that until we have filled up both of these. All right, so we have both of these filled up now we are just going to spread enchilada sauce all over the tops of them. And on top of that, some cheese. All right, so now we are just going to bake these for 20 minutes and then we'll be ready to put them in individual containers. Okay, so these have baked in the oven now for about 20 minutes and we can start spooning them into these. So fit those in there. And it looks like we can fit in some refried beans as well. So there is one. I'm very excited about them. All right, now we have all five of these enchilada meals ready to go <laughs> okay for our next recipe we're going to do some beef tips and gravy um, we're going to serve these over egg noodles we'll add those in a little bit later but an alternate way to do this would be to serve it over mashed potatoes either way uh, we'll fit in our little containers and we'll freeze just fine so uh, we're going to start by browning some meat and then we'll um, start adding the other stuff all right, the very first thing is we're adding about a tablespoon of some olive oil and I'm gonna let this start warming up. We wanna do this on medium high heat. I'm gonna give that just a second to warm up in there and then we're going to add our beef tips. Okay, we've just got some, some cut stew meat. Um, the recipe calls for two pounds. This is actually a little more than two pounds, so these are gonna be 
extra meaty, but instead of measuring it out, we're just gonna make them extra meaty today. Uh, so I'm gonna start adding these in. And the first step is just to get these browned good. And so we're gonna go ahead and start that here. Okay, while this is browning, we're going to uh, just go ahead and get some salt and pepper in there. A little bit to taste, not a whole lot. There's going to be uh, plenty of other seasoning when we add the broth and the soup and stuff, but this will be a little bit to help it out. Okay, so those are browned real good now. Um, what I did, <clears throat> some of the chunks are so big. When you're taking it out of the package, it's hard to tell if it's one chunk or if it's little ones stuck together. As you start stirring it around, they kind of break apart, but there were some really big pieces in there. Um, and so I, I pulled the really big ones out and went ahead and cut them down to smaller pieces. Uh, that let me see that they are cooked all the way through. And also we'll have actual bites in our, um, in our meal instead of <laughs> massive wads. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these out of here and we're going to use the Dutch oven um, for the separate piece in the next step. All right, I got this cleaned out. Um, we're just going to start all over again this time with another tablespoon of olive oil. Let that warm up and kind of coat the bottom of the dish and we're going to add one onion. I already cut the onion up so you don't have to watch me cry and uh, we're just going to toss it in here and saute it until um, all the, the onion pieces are soft which should be in the neighborhood of five to ten minutes not long. Um, I like cutting onion pretty small. I like for there to be onion in things. I like the flavor that onion adds. Um, I don't always like getting big chunks of onion when I take a bite. And so kind of like cutting the, the meat down smaller. I, I, I chopped it, but chop it um, as small or as big as you like. Just make sure we stir it around and get it coated in oil. So it will saute down. And then once this is ready to go, we'll add the meat back in and we'll start adding the other ingredients. When sauteing these onions, I always stay right on them and, and keep stirring them. Um, if I try to multitask and step away, the pieces on bottom or the smaller pieces will, will start burning without the other ones cooking through. And so um, I always pay a lot of attention to them. As soon as they lose that, that white opaque um, color, they're ready to go. Again, they're gonna stay in here and they're gonna cook more anyway, but we got these ready to go. So let's add the other ingredients. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add my beef back in. And boy, it really sizzles when that uh, moisture gets poured back in there. The next thing we're gonna add is one tablespoon of Worcestershire, Wor Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Wor Worcestershire, this dark sauce. The next thing we're gonna add is 10 and a half ounces of French onion soup. Uh, 10 and a half ounces is one can. And so we'll pour the whole can in. And then after that, we're gonna add 10 and a half ounces of broth. Now we have our own home canned broth, but I'm gonna use this can. I'm gonna step over to the sink and just fill this can back up so I know I got 10 and a half ounces. And I'm gonna turn the heat back up because the next thing we're gonna do is bring this to a boil. I'm gonna make sure the onions that are stuck up on the side of my pot get pushed back down in there. We don't want anybody left out. And the last thing our recipe calls for is one bay leaf. So we'll lay it right there on top. So what we're gonna do is bring this up to a boil. As soon as we get to a boil, uh, we're gonna put our lid back on, drop it down to a simmer, 
And we're gonna let it cook from an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, that's a long time, but that's gonna make those beef tips really tender and really have a chance to absorb this flavor. And so um, we're gonna take our time and let it do it right. As soon as this gets to a boil, I'll put it on and uh, we'll wait for this to finish. All right, listen to that good strong boil. We're going to cover this now. I'm gonna drop the heat down and then I'm gonna set my timer for an hour and a half and we'll be back to check on it. So we just pulled our Mississippi Mud Roast out of the Instapot and we're ready to pull it apart. It almost fell apart when we were taking it out but I'm still gonna use these little claw grabby things to pull them apart. Okay, so this is done, and now we're gonna scoop the, some rice into our little boxes. Now we're gonna put our meat in. So now we're gonna put some, our leftover broth in here. Not much, but you do want to get the rice wet. And these are finished. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half. Um, we're gonna check and see the recipe says that our beef tips should be fork tender. Um, now you can tell just biting into one if it's as tender as you like to eat it or not. So I'm not sure what the fork is supposed to be able to do other than cut it easily. But um, we're gonna pop the lid off and see how close we got. Uh, I will say while it was cooking for the last hour and a half, I did check it, I did stir it, and uh, I did add a little more broth and water because I was losing all of my moisture. So. Uh, pay attention, you might have to do that. You don't want it to just be grilled beef nuggets. Like <laughs> you, you want there to be some sauce in there. So uh, let's check it and see what we've got. Okay, ooh, it smells good. All right, so we're going to stir it around again. And best part about being the cook is getting to sample the, the food, right? So let's take one of these and see what we got. Mmm. Very tender. Well, it's perfect. Okay. The recipe says it might take two hours. We don't need to leave this on for two more hours. So let's move on with the next step. All right, so the next step, I did wash my hands, by the way. I just didn't move the camera over to the sink. Um, we're going to get this bay leaf out. And the last time I stirred it, I, I mashed it over to the side to make sure I could find it easy. So we're gonna get rid of that guy. So I've got a, a mixture here. It's just three tablespoons of cornstarch and about a third a cup of water. And uh, this is to thicken the juice that's in here. So we don't want it dry, but we also don't want it soup. We want there to be a, a gravy. And so we're just gonna add this a little bit at a time and we'll stir it in good while it's still over a simmer heat. And we'll just keep going until the texture is the way we like it. You might notice my other pot over here, um, I've got water starting to boil. This is gonna be for the egg noodles that we're gonna pour this over. So while this is heating up, <clears throat> we will work on this broth gravy. Okay, this is about the consistency that I like. Now, I did put almost all of that cornstarch mixture in there to get it to thicken, but remember I put too much meat in the beginning and I also came back and added some broth and some water while it was cooking, so I'm actually making quite a bit more than the, the recipe initially called for. Um, so it, it took a little more, but that's fine. This looks good. Okay, at this point, um, when you're tasting it, this might be the opportunity to add some more salt and pepper. Uh, if there's something else that you prefer to season with, uh, just get it 
tasting the way you want and my water is almost boiling on the other side so we're going to get the egg noodles ready and then we can start packaging these up in our little containers. All right, a pot of water is boiling as so we're going to put an entire package of egg noodles and uh, get it ready to go. All right, that sound means time's running out. We'll give the wheel a final spin. Vowels are worth nothing, consonants are worth some perfectly cooked egg noodles. Okay, that was our eight minute timer. I'm um, gonna check these noodles. They should be plenty done by now. Yep, nice and soft. Um, I'm gonna cut the heat off and drain them. And then we'll move over to the bar and start plating our meals. All right, we're just wrapping up now. It took a little bit of time because of the hour and a half in the Dutch oven, but this was super simple. It didn't take a lot of babysitting, right? It was, it was a very small amount of time. Um, so we're gonna get our noodles. I'm gonna use these. I believe these are actually for salad, um, but they work really good for noodles like this. And we're just gonna get the bottoms of our pans. A nice layer of noodles all the way across. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now we're just going to ladle in our meat sauce concoction. So there we go. That's pretty even. We'll snap our lids on, and these are ready for the freezer. All right, so the next thing on our agenda is we are gonna make some breaded oven baked fish, and we're gonna have some vegetables in there, but let's go ahead and get started on our fish. We wanna make sure the oven is heated to 425. We wanna line our baking sheets with foil, and then we wanna spray it with a nonstick cooking spray. Now I have about a pound and a half of tilapia here and I'm just gonna cut it into some smaller strips. This will just make it easy and more even to coat. All right, now I'm gonna take these and I'm going to go ahead and grind some pepper over the top of them. And some salt and then we'll flip them over and do it to the other side as well. Now we're gonna take a bowl, we're gonna put some panko breadcrumbs and some parsley. So let's start with our breadcrumbs and we want a cup of these. Let's go pick some fresh parsley. I have this fantastic little herb garden over here. Um, actually, the review I have for it should be coming out in the next few days, but I can just pick some parsley right off and ready to go. And I'll just tear up that parsley real good. You wanna make sure you just tear the leaves. You don't want the stems in there. And you want this in fairly small little pieces. You can cut it with a knife if you want, but. To me, this is just quicker and easier. <laughs> All right, so now we have our breadcrumb and parsley mixture. I'm also gonna take another container, a fairly shallow container, and I'm going to put a quarter of a cup of flour in it. And just as a reminder, all of these recipes, we're gonna link in the description, so you'll be able to find them later, so don't feel like you have to run and get a pen and be copying all this down. All right, and in the next bowl, we're going to add two eggs, a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. Now, if you don't like it spicy, you don't have to worry about this. I love Tony Sachery's for this. And two tablespoons of mayonnaise. And we'll just mix that mixture right on up. Now the process from here is pretty simple. We're gonna start with the flour and dip them in the flour. Then we're gonna dip them in the egg mixture. 
then in the breadcrumb mixture and place them on the baking tray. Super simple. Let's get all these done. Now these are all done and ready to go in the oven. We're gonna put them in the oven at 425 for about 20 minutes. And while we do that, Taylor is gonna show you how to make one of her absolute favorites, shrimp ramen. Okay, so now we're going to make some shrimp ramen. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is we're going to need to saute some vegetables. Going to put a little bit of olive oil in this bowl. And we have some carrots, some already shredded carrots, and some mushrooms. So that's about, that's one carrot and about eight ounces of mushrooms. So we're going to saute, saute those for a few minutes. Okay, so it's been a few minutes now. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to add garlic. This is about four cloves of garlic. Minced up. And here's what these, only for about 30 seconds. All right, now we are going to add our broth. This is four cups of a homemade broth that we made and we'll put a link to that video in the description below we're going to add a tablespoon of ginger teaspoon of soy sauce teaspoon of sesame oil And now we are going to put the lid on and wait for it to come to a boil. And I will see you then. Okay, so our soup is boiling and now here comes the easy part. We're almost done. All we have to do is add the noodles and the shrimp. So we have two of these blocks of ramen noodles just from instant noodles packages. Don't use the flavoring packages, just the noodles. That's what we're going to use. And we have about a pound of raw shrimp. So have that all in here. And we are just going to stick the lid on one more time and let it cook for three minutes. And then we'll be done. So see you then. All right, that sound means time. So, give this a stir. And, looks and smells really good. That is it. Now, just have to build this out into our little trays and we are done. All right, so this is all cooked and now we are just going to Serve it, I don't, bowl it up. These are not bowls. I don't know, do something with it. All right, it is done and we now have these amazing looking lunches to eat. And since that's done, mom is now going to box up the fish she's made and then we will have Michaela here with little pizzas all right our fish is ready to go we're gonna put two to three little pieces in each container I'm not even a huge fish person but this is making me actually want to eat fish and I just have a bag of frozen mixed veggies and I'm gonna put some mixed veggies in each one. Oh, 
All right, so we have our fish and veggies. Let's get the lids on those, and that is five more meals. We are zooming. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to make these English muffin pizzas. What you're going to need is English muffins. And you're going to cut them in half like this. We're putting three in each of these trays. You can put any topping you want on these pizzas. I like pepperoni and cheese though. So let's get started. When you microwave these, you can microwave them all together. But if you don't want them to get stuck together, then you can take them out and microwave them separately. So I'm going to add my cheese. That looks good. And then a few pepperonis. And there is one of your little pizzas. I'm going to go ahead and do these. And then I'll see you back when they're done. Okay, so now it's time to lid these. Make sure those are sealed good. So here's your little pizza box. All right, this next one is a really incredibly simple. There's nothing much more simple than just plain baked chicken. And if it's done well, it's so delicious. <laughs> So the first thing we want to do is to spray our foil line pan. This just makes it easier to get them off when we bake them. And then we want to take each chicken breast and we want to dab a paper towel on it and dry it off. And always remember, wash your hands really good when dealing with poultry. Next, we're going to take some melted butter and we're going to brush it over. And this just gives a nice golden um, skin outer coat to the chicken. Then we're going to take your favorite seasoning, whatever it is, you can mix something up yourself. I love Tony's Sacheries, so you're going to think I'm like a walking Tony's Sacheries commercial, but <laughs> Louisiana girl, you can take the girl out of Louisiana, but you can't take Louisiana out of the girl. So. <laughs> I'm gonna put some Tony's on it. And then we'll flip these and do the same on the other side. It is just that simple. And now all we do is we put them in the oven at 450 degrees for 15 to 18 minutes. And really the most safe way of telling whether your chicken is done or not is to use a thermometer and stick it in the middle of your chicken in the thickest part and make sure it reads 165. That's the safe poultry temperature. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and while we have the chicken out, Taylor is going to get started and she's going to get some other chicken prepared. So I will see you back here in a bit when our chicken is out and ready to go in the boxes. Okay, so next we are going to be making chicken tenders. I'm going to just use some baking spray to help the chicken not stick. And now we can get started. So first I have two eggs and I'm gonna whisk these up. All right, we have that. Then we're going to start mixing up the breading. So for the first part of the breading, we're going to make a separate bowl that has flour and salt and pepper. All right, so first with this part, we're going to add a cup of flour and we'll have the exact recipe again linked in the description below. And then half a teaspoon of salt and pepper each. And there's that. Then we are going to mix up the thicker breading. So we're going to have two thirds of a cup of panko bread comes first. 
And another two thirds of a cup of, we have seasoned breadcrumbs. And then we're going to add to this our seasonings. So we have a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder and a half a teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of dried basil, and this is actually another of the things that we made. We grew this basil and dried it out ourselves, and again, we'll have the link to that video in the description below. And lastly, two tablespoons of parsley. Make sure you get that mixed up good. And that looks really good. It smells really good. All right, so now we're going to start assembling our chicken strips. Okay, first we're gonna have our flour mixture right here to dip the chicken into. Then we're gonna coat that in eggs. And then lastly, we're gonna coat it in the breading. All right, it sounds like mom's chicken is done baking, so we are going to put these in the oven after it. And while we're waiting for that to bake at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes, we are going to make some mashed potatoes. All right, so while those are in the oven, we are going to start making mashed potatoes. And I am just using instant mashed potatoes this time, so these are super easy. First thing we're going to do is first add half a cup of milk, two tablespoons of butter, and a cup and a half of water. And we are just going to wait for that to boil, and we're going to dump in the potatoes, and that's it. Okay, so it looks like it's boiling now. So I'm gonna turn the heat off and add the potatoes. That looks about good for our mashed potatoes. So now we are just going to wait for the chicken to finish cooking, and then we'll be able to bowl them up. All right, there we have some chicken and mashed potatoes. All right, my chicken is out of the oven and cool and I'm gonna go ahead and put these chicken breasts in here one per thing and again I'm gonna just add some frozen veggies and just like that we have another delicious meal five more in the tank only five left to go Let's put the lids on these. And this makes 45 individual freezer meals. All right, we've got one meal left, five separate boxes. And that's gonna be some little slider cheeseburgers with mac and cheese. So we're gonna get the mac and cheese started first because it takes longer. I went ahead and got our water boiling for our noodles. So you want eight ounces of macaroni noodles and we're gonna put them in the boiling water. You can add a little bit of salt, which helps the noodles not to stick together as much. And we're gonna boil those for eight minutes. Don't worry if they're not quite soft and smushy, they're gonna cook in the oven a little bit, so that'll get them the rest of the way going. Now, while that's cooking, we are gonna make our sauce. Next, we're gonna melt our four tablespoons of butter, and then we want three tablespoons of flour, and we're gonna whisk this together for about three to five minutes until this mixture becomes paste-ish. All right, we've got a good paste going and that's light brown. That's probably about right. 
So we're gonna start adding our milk and we wanna add two and a half cups, a little at a time. And we wanna whisk it together as we go. All right, that is whisked in really good. We're gonna let this come to a simmer and we'll come back to it. But right now our pasta just dinged. I'm gonna drain this and then we're gonna come pour it into the pan we're gonna bake in it. The recipe calls for an eight inch square pan, but I didn't have any that were easy to get to at the moment, so I just grabbed a nine inch round. It'll work just the same. So we're gonna dump this in here and set it to the side for a minute. And we're gonna keep stirring this until it comes to a simmer. Okay, we have brought this to a simmer, and now it's time to add the cheese. We want two cups of sharp cheddar shredded, and then half a cup of finely shredded Parmesan, and some salt and pepper to taste. And now we will whisk that together until it's all nice and melted and creamy. And we're gonna cook it still over low heat. And we want a nice thick sauce, which look at that. So you can cook this a few minutes until the sauce is really your desired consistency, but no more than three to five minutes, I would say. Oh, that looks delicious. Now we're gonna take this and pour it over the mac and cheese. And going ahead to stir this really well until it's nice and combined with those noodles. That looks so good. And the last thing we're gonna do is make a crumb topping. We're gonna heat over medium heat. We're gonna melt two tablespoons of butter Once that butter is melted, we're going to add half a cup of breadcrumbs. And we're going to stir this for just a couple minutes. Um, we're going to coat them all the way in this butter and brown them slightly. This shouldn't take very long at all. All right, I don't know if you can tell, but the edges of these are getting slightly browned. This looks perfect. So now we're just gonna cover the top with these breadcrumbs. And now we're ready to go in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. While our mac and cheese is in the oven, let's go ahead and get started on our sliders. I took a pound of ground beef and I made it into tiny little patties about the size of the palm of my hand, a little smaller. And I made 10 of them because two of them are going in each little uh, tray. And you can season these however you want. You can put a little salt on them. I bet you can guess what I'm gonna put on them. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little Tony's on them. Y'all, I really didn't intend this to be a walking Tony's commercial, but. And I just put seasoning on both sides of each of these little patties. And the easiest way to cook these is over medium heat on just right on your stove top. And I'm not sure if all these will fit. We'll see. Looks like at least nine of them will fit. We might can squeeze the 10th one on. I know all you cooks are cringing because you're not supposed to overcrowd pans, but y'all, I'm not really a, a chef, so. <laughs> it'll be okay if I break a little bit of the rules. Shh, don't tell. But they all tend to fit on there. We're gonna cook them over medium heat. We're gonna let them go on one side, then we'll flip them and do them on the other side. All right, let's go ahead and give these a flip. Okay, these are all done. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on a plate with a paper towel to kind of absorb some of the grease. Y'all know ground beef is expensive, so buying the super lean stuff is just almost all the way out for us. So we have this fatty meat, and it tastes delicious, but it does get greasy. We do wanna kinda of drain the grease off. All right, our mac and cheese just has a couple more minutes in the oven, so let's go ahead and put together these sliders. I got these King's Hawaiian Rolls 
they work perfectly for sliders of any kind. If you do little hamburgers or even if you do like barbecue sliders, they're great. We're gonna put together two sliders for every little dish. So we wanna cut the rolls open. Now, here's a trick. Sometimes even if you drain the grease off and you reheat these, the buns can get soggy from the grease of the hamburger meat. So, if you put cheese on both sides of your hamburger, then it kind of blocks that moisture from getting into the bun and it keeps that bun from getting soggy. I'm just using sliced mild cheddar, by the way, and I'm cutting it to the size of the bun. You can use whatever kind of cheese you like. So now all that's left is to wait for that mac and cheese to come out. Mac and cheese is out. It is time to put it in the individual things. Okay, girls, are you super proud of all that we accomplished? Yeah. High five. High five. Or should I pull, <laughs> pull Michaela and headbutt you in the hand? <laughs> so we got 50 individual freezing reels in here and we couldn't be more excited. Which one are you most excited to try? Probably the chicken. The chicken? Which one? The breaded chicken that you made? Yes. That looks really delicious. How about you, Michaela? I don't know. I think I want, I like the breaded chicken too. The breaded chicken. Well, that'll be the first one that goes then. <laughs> they all look so delicious and I cannot wait to dig into these. This is going to be such an enormous help with our homeschool day. It's going to be enormous help saving money um, when Lance takes these to the office. It's going to be just fantastic. And I am so thankful that you joined us. Be sure if you got some value out of this, be sure to hit that like button. It really does help our little channel and hit that subscribe button so that you can see what we have coming up. We've got all sorts of great stuff coming up. In addition to more freezer meals, we've got some more throughout the gardening season we'll be canning we'll be preserving we'll be gardening these two have a flower farm business that they'll be talking about and they'll be planting for and planning for and of course all the chickens <laughs> so we are so thankful that you joined us thank you so much have a fantastic day